Hi to everyone. Myself Kokil Priya, Assistant Professor, Department of Computer Science, Kaiser College of Arts and Science for Women. Today I am going to discuss about Computer Networks Unit 3. The first one is Sliding Window Protocol. The next three protocols are bidirectional protocols that belongs to a class called Sliding Window Protocols. The three dif differ among themselves in terms of efficiency, complexity and buffer requirements. The essence of all sliding window protocols is that at any instant of time, the sender maintains a set of sequence numbers corresponding to frames it is permitted to send. These frames are set to fall within the sliding window. Similarly, the receiver also maintains a receiving window corresponding to the set of frames it is permitted to accept. The sender's window and the receiver's window need not have the same lower and upper limits or even have the same size. In some protocols, they are fixed in size, but, but in other, others, they can grow or sink over the course of time as frames are sent and received. Here, the window conditionally maintains a list of un unacknowledged frames. A 1-bit sliding window protocol. A sliding window protocol with a maximum window size of 1. Such a protocol uses stop and wait since the sender transmits a frame and waits for its acknowledgement before sending the next one. If the frame is the one expected, it is passed to the next layer and the receiver's window is laid up. The acknowledgement field contains the number of the last frame received without error. If this number agrees with the sequence number of the frame, the sender is trying to send. The sender knows it is done with the frame stored in buffer and can fetch the next packet from its network layer. If the sequence number disagrees, it must continue trying, trying to send the same frame whenever a frame is received, a frame is also sent back. A peculiar situation arises if both sides simultaneously send an initial packet. A protocol using go back and the long round trip time can have important implications for the efficiency of the bandwidth utilization. The problem described above can be viewed as a sequence of consequence of the rule requiring a sender to wait for an acknowledgement before sending another frame. If we relax that restriction, much better efficiency can be achieved. With an appropriate choice of the sender, we'll be able to continuously transmit frames for a time equal to the round trip, trans transit time without filling up the window. This technique is known as pipelining. Large number of succeeding frames will arrive at the receiver before the sender even finds out that anything is wrong. When a damaged frame arrives at the receiver, it obviously should be discarded, but what should the receiver do with all the correct frames following it? Two basic approaches are available for dealing with errors in the presence of pipelining. One way called go back and is for the receiver simply to discard all subsequent frames, sending no acknowledgements for the discarded frames. This strategy corresponds to a receive window of size 1. In other words, the detailing layer refuses to accept any frame except the next one it must give to the next layer. If the sender window fills up before the timer rounds runs out, the pipeline will begin to empty. Eventually, the sender will time out and retransmit all acknowledged frames in order, starting with the damaged or lost one. A protocol using selective repeat. In this protocol, both sender and receiver maintain a window of acceptable sequence number. The sender's window size starts out at zero and close to some predefined maximum max sequence. The receiver's window, in contrast, is always fixed in size and equal to maximum sequence. The receiver has a buffer reserved for each sequence number within its fixed window. Thank you.